for today's service, I walk up like usual, and I'm looking at my Bible and the stuff that we need to be prepared, and um, some type of a, a demonic attack has been placed on God's Word. It's this little pen right here. I want you to notice what that is. So in the name of Jesus, we baptize this pen, and we pray that God will do a great, great work. Go to Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. A to the men. Prediction really quick. I'm praying that uh, people say, oh, here comes the, here, you know, redemption. Da, 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 da. No, it's called a care package, and we gave it to you two weeks ago and blessed you with a win. You're welcome, Auburn. But this coming up Saturday, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, War Eagle. So, I, I want you to go. I want you to go. If we lose, it's going to be awful. Um, <laughs> just, it is what it is. Um, expectation and reality sometimes. Expectation and reality. Um, you, you, you know what you expected when you got married. You go back and you remember that. This is what I imagined, right? Uh, expectation deals with fiction. It's, um, it's a Hollywood version of, of um, happily ever after, and they lived happily ever after. You know, and, and so it, it's, that, it's that movie mentality. It's that, um, I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? It's that, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a make believe it's it's not reality because because it, because because what happens is is this sometimes we have a make believe version of Christianity and, and we come in here and we expect that at salvation I got baptized so now I'm gonna get a new boat and God's gonna bless me and I'm gonna just be living in all these blessings right but then you face some suffering and then you face some places that make you scared and then you hear a preacher get up and say God doesn't give the spirit of fear but of love and a sound mind and you think what is wrong with me and so we leave here going I can't be afraid I gotta be more full of faith and I gotta this and I gotta that but what you gotta understand is the temp or, or the temptation with that is I gotta be better I, I, I gotta I gotta I gotta okay I'm gonna be you know I could preach on prayer today and you could leave and be like oh my god I need to pray more I knew it I knew it I knew that I needed to pray more or I could talk about faith and I could talk about a whole lot of things uh, but I don't want you leaving going oh man I just don't need to be afraid what I what I want you to leave doing is saying this from now now on, make this confession, okay? What do you do? What do you do? Let me ask you this question. What do you do when, 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 when you can't see what's standing right in front of you, right? Let me, let me ask you like this. Um, I, I'm serving God, but I can't see him. How many of you have saw God before, right? Now, you've seen him in things, but have you saw God? Now, now, now sometimes I'm, I'm singing, but, but I don't see him. And sometimes I serve him, but I don't see him. And how, how do I recognize when God is in the room? Now, his scripture says where two or three are gathered, I am in the midst of them, right? That he inhabits the praise of his people, the yada, the, the hands are in the air, that, that, that uh, tehillah, it is that it's song of thanksgiving. He inhabits that. He comes rushing into that moment. But what do you do when what everybody else is seeing, I'm not feeling and or seeing? You have to understand that it is in a about my my feelings it's about in that moment the the real wise ones in the room the, the, the ones that have been around God long enough to know um, when they see spiritual attack on somebody they don't freak out when you tell them what's going on I remember this kid in student ministry one time and he came up to me and I'm thinking oh Lord he's gonna tell me something crazy and he said um oh, pastor Josh I smoked a joint okay and I'm thinking that's it Awesome. And I'm not negating that. Now, now you may be in here going, I struggle with that, and I wish I could right now. And I'm praying that God will break that addiction off of you. But in, in real terms, I'm, I'm literally sitting, okay, good. That's all you've done. Awesome. Thank the Lord. You know? and so we, but we had a real, real moment. And, 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 and what do you do when, 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 when you're in there, you're, you're trying to feel God's presence. You're seeing everybody else see it, but you're not seeing it. And, and there's this guy, he was a servant of Elisha. Now, Elisha, you need to know, got a double portion from Elijah. But, but, but Elijah, 
Elijah was his mentor, a protege. It was the guy that led him. And I want you to see that this Elijah, um, you know, you know, he, he called fire down from heaven and, and he did some amazing things. But Elisha got a double portion of his power. So, so I've, I've watched these things and I've, I've in certain um, seasons of my life prayed for the fire to fall and I didn't technically see the fire fall, right? And I prayed for um, uh, sickness to be healed. I prayed for all kinds of things and it didn't work out the way I thought it should work out. Because what you imagine, what you imagine sometimes doesn't match up with reality. But I want you to know about faith is not just blind faith. There's fact behind it that Jesus got out of that tomb. That's what separates our Christianity religion, if you will, from every other religion in the world is our God is not dead. That he was perfect, came down to this earth. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And then when he got done with the grave, folded up his clothes, cleaned the room, and said, I'm out, y'all. And then, and, he, and then he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there because he, he defeated Satan. And now Satan is so miserable because he was cast out of heaven for pride. Pride got him kicked out of heaven because he thought, I, I want to be, be my own God. And we, we, if you're honest, fight with being our own gods. Like, I want to be in control. Like, I don't want to do it. Like, forgive my neighbor. That's crazy. Like, I don't even want to love him. Like, no, I don't forgive you. I don't even like you. And so you're trying to struggle with doing what God's word says. And, and I'm going, but, my, but, but, but wait, wait, wait. He said I'm more than a conqueror. And, and I'm scared to death because I got cancer. He said I'm more than a conqueror, but I, but I don't feel his presence. What do you do when your expectation doesn't match reality? I told you a little bit from Kyler's perspective about the baptism last week. And Kyler is my son. He's seven years old. And, um, and I baptized him uh, uh, two weeks ago. And in my mind, my expectation was, like, he's going to come around the corner and he's going to levitate, right? And <laughs> angels are going to pick him up and place him in the pool. And, like, we're going to have the pictures here. It's just going to be flawless pictures for Instagram. Like, my expectation was, like, all of you are just going to be crying. And 15,000 people got saved that wasn't even in this room. And so then I baptized him. And it was like, ha. And everybody worshiped and we left saying, what a moment. But reality was, reality was this. He's walking up the steps going, Dad, I don't want to do it. I don't want, I'm dead serious. You, some of you heard him, right? And I'm sitting there going, these people, I'm thinking this, right? My wife has more faith than me, not me. I'm, I'm going, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, everybody in the church is thinking that I'm forcing my kid to get baptized. This is horrible. <laughs> This is sort of like ratings are down. Sort of like, we'll baptize our kid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Such a good idea, though. If your church is struggling, baptize your children again. And so, and so I'm sitting there going, what do I do? What do I do? And, and so I, you know, in that moment, like, it just wasn't what I expected. Now, finally, he went with it, right? Because I forced him under the water. <laughs> That's what it is. And so, but that night, he was so excited. He's like, oh, Dad, I wish I wouldn't have been so scared. But fear is a reality. You know, and sometimes your expectation and you and you carry a grudge with your wife or with your husband because because you dream since, you know, you're three and four years old, what that day would be like and what that year would be like. And you're so mad because it didn't match up with what you expected. Right. But faith looks past that and faith looks to the fact of God's word. It makes stories less about you and I and more about Jesus. Right. Because our expectation is there's none righteous. No, not one. So I, we're not good enough at all. We're not even close. But Jesus was perfect. And that's why I want to push you into a story in Second Kings chapter six with the time that we have left. And I want you to see as we read through this story what it looks like to see recognizing God. God standing right in front of you. I want you to recognize God standing right in front of you. And what I'm praying specifically today is that God will give you a vision of the invisible. That God will give you a vision of the invisible. If you're at 2 Kings chapter 6, let me read the story so we all get it in context together. It says this as we read this together. It says in verse number 8, when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the uh, 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 Arab, I'm sorry, Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. 
So it, so it happens again. It says, so the king of Israel would send word to the place, indicated that by, uh, by the man of God, time and again, Elisha warned the king so that, he would be, so that he would be on the alert there. Then the king of Aram, being very, very upset over this, he called his officers together and demanded, which one of you is the traitor? Which one of you keeps running your mouth about what I'm saying in my living room? Hey, kids, have your parents ever found something out and you thought, which one of my brothers told them? <laughs> like growing up, my parents would be busting us out on something and then, and then they'd be like, the Holy Spirit told me, right? <laughs> but I'd be like, who's the Holy Spirit? Where's she at? Where's he at? <laughs> I wanted to find him. But Elisha was in touch with God so much that he knew. He knew the Holy Spirit had warned. I don't know how he warned it, but, but he would tell him certain things. And, and, and that's why you can receive that text message at 4 o'clock in the morning from a friend that woke up because the Holy Spirit woke them up and said, I need you to get on them right now. They're going in a direction. I, that's, what, that's why you can have that mom that will just walk down to your room. I had a mom that would pray over me in the middle of the night, right? You talk about weird. I'm like, I can hear you, right? <laughs> He's far from you. <laughs> you know, it's kind of awkward. I'm like, I I'm awake, right? And so, like, I'm thankful for, for some mamas and daddies that, that, that got enough unction of the Holy Spirit in them not to give up on kids when they've given up on themselves. And if you're in here and you had any type of godly heritage that didn't give up on you, praying you out of the pit that you are in, you better take three seconds and shout amen! So he became very upset over this. He called the officers together and he demanded, which of you is the traitor? Who has been offering, who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? They said, it is not us, my lord, the king. One of the officers replied, Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel, even the words you speak in your bedroom. You better watch out because if you get somebody that's truly connected, God will speak to them in a moment and they'll come running up to you, David, like Nathan, and say, it ain't everybody else, David. It is you. And a conviction, convicting power of the Holy Ghost will fall on your life. That's why, that's why you better thank God if you get called out because God's wrath will, will, will leave you in your sin, but God's love will call you out of your sin. And if God calls you out of your sin, don't you rebuke him. You thank God and run towards him. Don't run away from him, but run towards him and he says he says um go find out where this is the king commanded so i can send troops to seize him at the report uh, and the report came back elisha is at dothan so one night the king of aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city check this out when you don't see it when you don't see what everybody else is seeing that's where i'm getting at a vision of the invisible that's where we're getting at a, a being able to see god in the everyday in the in the in the mundane in the supernatural when in the natural you can't see it when 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 the servant of the man of god got up early the next morning now now i wonder if this was the same servant that had been there when when the when the widow ran out of oil right and, and god ended up using that oil she ended up uh, god ended up using what was already in her house. I wonder, and, 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 I wonder if he saw that miracle. And I wonder if he saw um, Elisha raising people from the dead. Now, now the same guy comes in and he says, early in the morning, he went outside. There were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha, you, you know, if you don't have a vision of God, if you don't have your own vision of God, have you ever wondered why certain people have such incredible drives? Um, like, I, I know some people that, that, that are they're really, really driven, you know, uh, because they see things that are unseen. They, they, they're not experiencing right now one day what they hope to experience, the house and the car and, and, and the big business and or uh, that dream becoming a reality. But men and women alike will stay up, will get up, get up really, really early and stay up really, really late because they see things that are unseen. You see things happening in that company where you're building right now that, that other people can't see it's not it's not reality yet but it will be reality and that's why you have to have a vision in your own christian walk it may not be reality right now but i've learned it's less about the destination with kyler and it's more about enjoying the drive the drive is is is, is the part where destination driven christians can get can you can get really depressed if you get into the moment because it didn't match up with what you which what would i thought i imagined but 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 those that enjoy the drive understand that God's moving even when I can't see him. And so, so Elisha, I want you to see what Elisha did. Now, Elisha didn't come out and look at all of these, this army and go, oh, my Buddha. 
oh, my Buddha, what are we going to do, right? He didn't freak out. He didn't start crying. You know what he did? This is exactly what he did. I'm glad you asked. He said this, don't be afraid. He said, fear not. He didn't even go out there and look. He wasn't stressing all of that. He said, for there are more on our side than our own theirs. And I needed to hear that this week. The, 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 the Elisha, Jesus in my life, rolls into my situation and says, hey, what you stressing about? We got more than they got. Quit. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He said to fear not. Now, if you do study your Bible, you're going to see that he does this with Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1, guess what he told him? He said, Abraham, fear not. You know what happened with Joshua and Joshua 1a? He told him, hey, Joshua, fear not. Neither be dismayed. He said, because I'm with you. He said it four different times for those of you that need repetition and or a retweet shout amen that God is with you he is with you he said I never left you look 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 quit being afraid why are you so scared Kyla was scared to death but after the fact woo, he was like I'm so glad I did it I'm so glad. and you may be scared to death to do what God is calling you to do but after you do it you're going to be like thank God and Elisha said this, this this is big he said then Elisha prayed oh Lord open his eyes and let him see and can I tell you something? That's my message today. <laughs> that's, that's, I just gave it away. There's the answer. That answer you've been looking for? That's, that's the answer. All you do in that moment when you don't know what to do, God, open my eyes and let me see you in this situation. You know, you know my brother passed away six months after we planted this church. He was 27 years old. Um, we, we, we looked like twins and, and, um, and it was in that moment I'd never faced, um, death uh, with a, with a, you know, close family member. And, and, and I'd never experienced the pain of that. I've never experienced the, the hurt that, 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 that involves. But what I, what I didn't realize was, was recognizing God in that, that, that he was there the entire time. And what God was doing there was to prepare me for what was to come, right? And, and what was to come was I've done three funerals in the last three weeks. And, and I have one tomorrow of a young man, a young man that overdosed this week, right? He, he OD'd. And, and so, so being able to stand in that moment and, and minister to people in that moment, um, God takes you through some moments to prepare you for that, right? To really to get you to understand. But you got to be able to recognize God in the moment when, when you hear, you know, um, that, that like for me as a pastor, I can be like, you know, you know, you know we're serving people and, and, and trying to encourage people. And then my own family, my, my, this is my own. This is my brother dies, right? And, and, and so can, the devil, can you imagine what the devil does with your own mind as a pastor to say, oh, you're reaching all those people, but your own brother, you know, like, 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 like needed help. And in that moment, God showed us several things. You know, you had to recognize God in that situation and and I see now I, I can I can look back and I can see God's glory in every single bit of, but in the moment in the moment you know it, it was that night it was about 3 33 in the morning um we had been to the hospital and and um and and they declared him dead and 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 um and, and so we went back to the house and, and, and everybody got around the house and, and it was about 3.33 in the morning and we're standing outside, it's cold, it's about you know how the weather's been uh, kind of cold lately and, and, and we're standing out there and I remember it was at 3.33 that the storm alarm came on, there was no storm, right? And it was just like, bah, bah, and we started laughing because we saw God in that fact that Justin's setting off the alarm, right? And it was the next day that about 8 o'clock in the morning I go outside and I look off the front porch and, and, and as I looked off the front porch I saw three deer, three, I saw three, God the Father the Son, the Holy Spirit, God he was there the entire time you see because it was in that moment that wouldn't make sense to you but it made a whole lot of sense to me and I saw God in that moment you know you know we were standing with our family and we were preparing for the funeral and 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 and, and the guy that, that that did the funeral for our family loved us and said you know what I'm gonna take care of the funeral costs and our in our family this was just our family this wasn't a big choir but it was our our family and we broke out and we are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels, they're all around. So let us praise Jesus now. Now some of y'all don't know about that, that's a little old school. For we are standing in his presence 
on holy ground. Some of y'all know about that. You know about that. But it was in that moment that I sensed God's spirit there and recognized God was in the room with us, that he hadn't left us. You see, you see, you don't need to pray for anything else, but God opened my eyes. God opened, but, 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 but before he did that, you know what he did? He encouraged him with his word. He said, look, 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 look. He brought you into this room, not to dazzle you today with all the lights, but just to say, fear not. Listen, God told me to tell you, fear not. I'm with you. I'm with, and, and, then, and then deeper than that, deeper than that, he said, he said God said, I'm praying that your eyes are open. I'm praying, I'm praying. No, no, no. Some of you may be praying for a husband and or a wife or a best friend or, or maybe your kid or maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's a struggle that you're having with somebody else. And really all you need to pray is God open up their eyes because he, he didn't panic, he prayed every single time. That's the power of a righteous man. The prayer of a righteous man, it, it, it availeth much. Man, that just doesn't seem that spectacular, though, does it? Until you're in the moment and you need God to work a miracle. You need God to do something so great for you. And when he comes through, you, that's why you see certain people in here, you can't shut them up. Because of what God's done in their life. So, so God brought me in here to, st- to simply say this. He says, magnify the Lord over and over and over. That does not mean make God big. God's already big. He don't need you to make him big. He's big. It means you need to see him as big. It's time the church starts seeing God as big. In times where, where, where like, like we're seeing racial wars, hate, discrimination, we're seeing racism, we're seeing, we're seeing destruction all around us. It's time that the church quit looking down in fear and look up and say, God, I know you're there. Show me. <laughs> oh, it's right. It's all, look, husbands, look up. Look up and recognize God's all around you. Because when he looked up, when he looked up in verse number 17, would you just go with me in the theater of your mind? Let me have your imagination. He said, then Elijah prayed, the Lord open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up somebody, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. The very thing that he looked out and saw the enemy had, God said, I can do the same thing. Duplicated it on a whole nother level and said, boom, there you go. He said, I've got you. Sur-. Listen, God told me to tell you he's got your enemies surrounded. Do you understand? Look, 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 look. You need to understand this. That, that God didn't just open the eyes of the servant. He, he blinded the enemy. He blinded the enemy. He blinded the enemy. Now, now I need to talk to you for a second because I'm going to teach just for a second. I need you to see this. As you begin to magnify the Lord, there's a reason for that. When you look up, there's angels are dispatched for God's anointed. Uh, Psalms 34, verse 7. Let me prove this to you. Angels are dispatched. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of, his, of your heart. He goes on in, in chapter 34. It says, the angel of the Lord encamps, encamps, surrounds. Uh, he, he, he encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Those that fear him are those that respect him. Those that honor, reverence him as, as who he is. And, and God says, I got you surrounded. You know why he told him to look up? He told him to look up. Why did he open his eyes? Did, now, now, did those angels that were surrounding them defeat the army? If you keep reading the story, they didn't. Elisha, in this story, took him out and he let him out. <laughs> he prayed, hey, God opened his eyes and blind theirs. And God's going to blind the eyes of your enemy and you're going to pass through situations where they didn't even see you coming because the Holy Spirit of God blinded the eyes of your enemy. And he took him out of the city and he brought him into Israel. He, bring, he brings him out of the city. He brings him into, and the king finds out. He's a, he just led the entire army. I don't know how he blinded them because it, it obviously wasn't the fact that they couldn't see or they wouldn't be able to follow, but, but he blinded them enough for them to follow him. Somehow he gave a delusion or something, and, 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 and he began to follow him. And he fought the, the entire army that was trying to kill Elisha followed Elisha into this land. And, and, and the king said, hey, can we, let's kill him. Let's kill him. And, and, and I want you to see this. I want you to see that... that, that the reason why he did this, the reason why he allowed the angels to be seen is that God's not going to use an angel to do what he wants to do through you. Elisha let him out, not the angels. So, so God said, look, 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 children, I want to upgrade. I want you to see visions of the unseen. I want you to see me in a different light. And the reason why he's saying this is because this, once you understand that God has surrounded you, when you come in agreement with God, forces once unseen fight battles that are seen. You quit fighting it on your own. He said, it's not your fight. 
And he said this to me. He said, he said it, what it does is it boosts your confidence because you realize daddy's with me. You know when dad's with you when you're a little kid and you're scared to death to go outside, or, or, uh, but you had your best friend with you, right? And it just gave you confidence to do things you couldn't do, do before. And, and, and dad's just saying, I, I'm with you. So, so Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, he that's begun a good work and you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. So as we read this, and as I, as I begin to walk through this story, I started seeing him with Abraham. You remember the story where, where Abraham was supposed to sacrifice his son and And then all of a sudden he looks up. He looks up in that moment of obedience. That's the first act of worship. Worship in the Bible is not hands in the air. Worship is obedience. Because when you look at the first word mentioned of worship in the Bible is they went up to worship the Lord together. Now, Abraham is taking Isaac. It's a picture of God sacrificing his son. uh, And and, and Jesus would be the ultimate Isaac. And and now if you you see this story the way it's portrayed, they went up to worship and and he was just obedient. He was obedient. He he said, I I don't know where, because Isaac was like, hey what what are we gonna sacrifice when we get up there (laughs) and Abraham's like don't worry God's got it and when they get up there Jesus was seen in the unseen the the visible uh, the invisible became visible and they saw a ram in the thicket a ram was in the thicket it was the woman who was dying and she was just about to pass away and 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 Elijah said hey hey what 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 do you what do you have in the house and she said I just got this oil it was there the whole time it was in the living room last night we're with Violet K and um and and I need to tell you this because she has a pap pap and she loves it and and can't sleep without it and 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 it was hidden in the living room have you ever lost something in your own living room and you couldn't find it and 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 we we did we we lost it it was in the living it was we we walked past it every day not knowing that it was already there it was we, we we just couldn't see it we couldn't see it. it's there the whole time but I couldn't see it and it was hidden the whole time but I couldn't see it until Kyler moved some covers and he found her pap pap and she was pumped and and, and God began to speak to me and 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 just and and, and work on my heart because I, I need to know that that, that 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 God opens up your eyes in such a way what's hidden in your own living room what's hidden in your own house what is God trying to do with you and he's trying to open your eyes pray God open my eyes he'll do it and he'll show you things. Call upon, the, call upon me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty. God, I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Recognizing God right in front of you is having to partner with him on a daily, asking God to open your eyes for every situation. Mary saw Jesus, but didn't recognize him as God until he said, Mary. And then she's like, he was, and she thought he was the gardener, but it was God the whole time. We're looking into situations thinking it's the gardener, but it was God the whole time. Oh, that's just three deer. No, it wasn't. Last week, we're, we're getting ready for a turkey drive, right? And, and, and you guys bought 147 turkeys and, and, and brought them onto this property, right? So we're leaving going, we need some more turkeys. Because, God, I believe you're going to send more people. So I went over to Food Depot, and, and they couldn't work the deal that we wanted. And I'm sitting there going, we can't afford this. Are you kidding me? How are we going to do it? But we, pre- we pressed on, and we went on to Walmart, right? And while I'm in Walmart, I need you to see that God is in the unseen. He's doing things when you can't even see he's doing it. Say, God, open my eyes. So we get ready. Going into Walmart, I'm asking them how much we could buy 100 turkeys for us. I need 100 of them, all right? And so he's back there trying to work on it. While he's working on it, while he's getting us prices and all that, a guy came up to me, um, and, and I just said hey to him. He said, how you doing? Good to see you. We knuckle bumped. He walked off. And, um, and the next thing I know, I'm back there in the dairy aisle waiting on our turkeys, right? Waiting on our frozen turkeys, and we're just talking and reminiscing. And my name gets called over the loudspeaker, and I looked around. I was like, is that my? Is that? Yes, Lord. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I'm asking the guys that were me. I'm like, did you just hear that? Somebody just called my name? And, and they're like, yeah, I think somebody called you. So I went up to, like, customer service. I didn't realize they told me to go to that little, like, the, 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 I guess there's a place where you can get money. And, um, and, and so, so I, I go up front, and I'm looking, and all of a sudden, the same guy that I saw earlier comes running up to me. It's the same guy that I just said hey to. He comes running up to me. He said, man, when God tells you to do something, you just got to do it. And he hands me, uh, he, had, he had went, unbeknownst to me, and got two gift cards for a, for five hundred dollars a piece, and this man hands me a thousand dollars and said, "God told me to help you get them turkeys." I'm like, I'm like, oh snap! I'm dancing down the ham aisle. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa! Like, 
like, are you kidding me? And we, we hugged each other. And, and I started to say, I mean, what, like, like, what is the coincidence of just being there at that exact time, at that exact moment? It's seeing God in the unseen. It's getting a vision of the invisible, that your God has surrounded you everywhere you go. He's into your tomorrow, but he's in your right now. And when you begin to see him, you say, God, open up my eyes. Do not miss you in the moments that I need you the most. So as we close this story out, I can't close this out with it just being about us. And then I need you to see, I need you to see, because I need your expectation to be that, that, that as God is opening up your eyes, he's closing the eyes of what's trying to defeat you, right? And, and the same thing the devil used to distress and defeat him, God used to defend and encourage him. Do you understand? He, the, the devil will flash. He is a roaring, he is as a roaring lion. He will flash stuff in front of you and you'll feel like you're defeated. But God will use the same thing. Chariots of fire, he said, I got more of them. Send them. Send them, right? To give you confidence. Child of God, get your confidence up. God has got you. Get your weight up. God's got you. He's got your marriage. He's got your kids. He's got everything that you're working on, the things you're stressing about. He says, give it to me. I care for you. He said, don't walk in anxiety, but bring your supplication to me because I love you. Whatever is good, think on that. Why does he get you thinking on other stuff? Because he's over there defeating death you don't know nothing about why you're over here going God's good oh I love it thank you for being patient with me thank you God for working me with me when I was prideful and as I close out I want you to see this you understand in verse number 23 the king says let's kill him let's kill him let's kill him let's kill him and, it's, and it says so the king made a, a, a great feast for them right go to verse 22 I need, I need everybody to see this he said, he said, can we kill them? They're trying to kill us. Now, now listen, if we're believers, quit fighting battles that are God's. And quit getting on Facebook and running your mouth about things that heaven needs to take care of. You say, well, when do we give up on people and when do we church them? When God gives up on you is when we'll give up on people, right? So at your last breath, that's when we'll quit, right? But God doesn't give up on people. He keeps pursuing them. So he says, of course not, Elisha replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home again to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and then sent them home to their master. After that, um, the, 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 they stayed away from Israel. They never fought with them again. Now listen, listen, I need you to see this. Romans chapter 12 says this. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he starts to give him something to drink. He said, in doing so, I'll heap coals of fire over their head. Now, that can be confusing. You're like, heck yeah, God's going to burn my enemies alive. This is amazing, even better. But it's a representation of what happens when the love of God meets the lies of the enemy. It melts people down to submission. And they see Jesus in you for a moment. Can people see Jesus in you? For a moment and you forgive when you don't want to how do you do that god open up my eyes to your word lord help me to do he said don't overcome evil uh with evil but overcome evil with good now john 16 33 says uh, that, 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 that he said don't be afraid of the world he said i've overcome the world so this is our job this is our job this is it today i want you to ask god to give you a vision of the invisible those special moments sitting right in front of you. Can we not miss any more moments because we're on our cell phone at lunch? Can we not miss our kids? They're going to be grown. They're going to be out of the home. And I was so focused on, I'm guilty, so focused on Twitter and Instagram that I miss the miracles in my own life. God was seen. He's been seen since we started this thing. I saw God through my kids. I saw God through when, when Kyler saw, uh, uh, when he pulled into the um, graveyard, he didn't see graves. He saw flowers. He said, look at all those pretty flowers. Out of the mouth of babes, God is speaking to you. Listen to your kids more often. I promise you, you'll hear God in their mouth. It's the faith of a child. It's really simple. He says this, are you broken? Awesome. He said, because... I draw near to those who are broken, and I save those who are crushed in spirit. Are you afraid? Do you feel like you've been surrounded? 
You say, I'm serving him, but I don't see him. God, open the eyes of your children. Let this be our prayer today. God, open the eyes of my heart and blind the eyes of my enemy. He's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let the church say amen. Somebody give him praise. There's an angel armies that have surrounded you. They have surrounded you. God has surrounded, he, 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 he surrounded you with, 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 with angel armies. And he's got your situation. Look up to him and say, God, open my eyes. And when he opens your eyes, he's going to show you things. Whew, you're surrounded. Your situation's surrounded. There's some people in faith sowing into God and what he's doing. Do you understand? Listen, don't be, don't be alarmed. It's okay. It's okay. They're sowing into that word saying, Lord, absolutely. So in the name of Jesus, if you don't know him, he said, it's my grace that I, it's by, it's by his grace that you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. I'm done. I'm done. I, I can't save you. Only Jesus can. But I believe that the Holy Spirit draws people. I believe all of your life led up to this moment right here. God's been working on you, speaking to you in a hundred different ways. And that thing you thought that would kill you was the thing that God used to bless you. And it's in that blessing that he's going to break the curse off of your life. And the curse that was on your life will have power no more. This is your answer from this moment forward. Say, open my eyes. If you're not saved, God, open my eyes. Let me see. Let me hear. Why would Jesus say, if you have ears to hear, then hear. Oh, say, God, let me hear you. And if God is drawing you right now, if he's speaking to you with nobody looking around in this moment of privacy and concentration, Christians, be praying in this moment in faith. God's moving. God's moving. God's moving right now. You say, that's me. That's me. You say, you say, I, I don't know Jesus, but I want him to, I want him to come into my life. And I, I, I know I'm lost. Would you be, would you be willing to admit that? Would you be willing to say, I, I know I'm lost. I, I don't know Jesus like that, but I want to know him. You say, that's me. Would you be willing to just put your hand in the air? I see that. I see that, okay? Okay. I need you to, I need you to see. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It, it, it is by faith that you're saved. It, it's God's grace that you're saved through faith. He says, call upon me. I will answer thee. He, he, he says, confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. This moment for it is a change of mind. That when your confession becomes Jesus, repentance happens. When repentance happens, I turn. From where I was going and from this moment forward, I'm headed towards Jesus.